dancing. Biblically, if you can find a scripture in the Bible that tells me where dancing is wrong, show it to me and we'll stop. So, if we all cooperate with one another, it ain't nothing that you got to look up in the Bible, oh, I forgot to do that. No, it's just common sense. You know, when certain body parts come together that something's bound to happen, right? Amen? Let, let, let's say it. Amen or oh me. Amen. 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 There's nothing wrong with holding a girl's hand. There's nothing wrong with side hugging. Front hugging, though. Face me. My body parts and her body parts, when you hug, once the pressure is there. Don't jerk me around. Right. <laughs> once the pressure is there, suddenly there's more pressure to do other things. You got to know that you stop when you know that your next step, you're going to end up going all the way. I pray, Father, that, that your, your spirit would heal them. And I pray, Lord, they can get some help. Lord, for people in this group that have already given away their virginity so they could understand that they're forgiven and they wouldn't have to enter a marriage relationship one day wondering if sex is everything that you created it to be. When you start dating and you have sex with a girl, one thing leads to another. And let's be real honest. I mean, it starts where you passionately are kissing you're on a couch together or in a bed together with your clothes on and clothes start coming off. Hands are not where they're supposed to be. And then all of a sudden you're having sex and you go, well, how did I get here? And you see, for the guy, in all honesty, for the guy, just the kissing part is not enough most of the time. It's the same way with sin. It's the curiosity of sin that gets you. What's the result of sin according to scripture? Death. What? Death. 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 No slobber. <laughs> no slobber. <laughs> This is how you dance with a woman this size, for he won't be buried into the uh, bosom. Okay? Well, <laughs> well, there's a, there's a difference. Okay? When she puts his arm, how do you how do you put his arm around here? Like this? Yeah. Like this. This is how she dances. At least keep some things for it won't be like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nothing like that. Something like that. Right. Well, it's that pimp. And then if you dance, if she's dancing with somebody tall like me, but then she's gonna have to do the same thing. She has to keep her distance between that person as well, which is okay. Hey, this is, it's okay. No, no, it's okay to, to, to hug each other. Go ahead and hug. I don't want to hug right close. You don't want me to. That's okay. If you've messed up, some of you have already talked about that you've messed up, you can go on from here and Wednesday night, you can recommit your vows into the <coughs> Lord that I'm, I'm, from this point on, on, I'm saving myself until marriage. Katie, you married Chris. How are you going to be able to look at him and say, I saved myself for you, but him not being able to say that to you? How are you going to handle that? Because that's like in his past. And I'm not okay. going to judge him for something that he's done before. Okay. Jennifer, um, for a girl who has given away a virginity, <laughs> now, for a guy that's still technically a virgin, and the girl that you're dating that you might end up marrying has already made a mistake, are you dealing with that the same way that everybody else says that they're going to be dealing with that? One thing I would just tell her is that, you know, your past is behind you. You know, when you were born again, Christ took the old self and he threw it in the pit of hell. So just don't like Satan. Bring it back to the Okay. Are you embarrassed, Jennifer? <laughs>
Hi, everybody. This is Dawson McAllister of Dawson McAllister Live. Talk radio for the American teenager. How you doing tonight? We're live all across the country. It's talk radio for teenagers, 21 or younger. We'll do the trick. You want to talk about your parents? You want to talk about your friends? We want to put you on the air with Dawson, okay? By the way, how What's are you doing call, with this true love weights? Texas, okay? How are you doing with your date uh, life, are you talking your sexuality? About you having trouble saying no? Let's talk about that tonight. You want to? All right, so we got somebody who wants to talk about true love, and she just broke up with her boyfriend. Romance talk tonight. Hi, Amber. Hey. Even though you're 15, you say, I really loved him, and it's love, isn't it? Uh-huh. It's not just like, oh, you're too young and you can't really be loved. To you now, it's love. It's a real thing, huh? Yes, I know that was real love because God told me it was. Yeah, and then he said goodbye. Yeah. You're having a hard time. Well, not anymore because God helped me to understand that he was teaching me how to love, what true love was. And what, okay, he's teaching you what true love is, and what is true love then? Well, it's... You, you do anything for the person you love, and this guy, I would have, I would have done anything for him. Anything covers a lot of activity here now. You know, like anything good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, are you a virgin? Are you pure and everything? Yes. Well, I pray that you'll keep being pure, and that you know you'll you'll do that true love waits and make that commitment. You know. Yeah. To pledge to stay pure no matter how much you love the guy. I can't believe you actually ate the school food, man. That's like sick. So have y'all ever heard of True Love Wait? Like what it is, it's like making a commitment to God about not having sex till you're married. That way you like be pure for the lady. So like when you get married, you can say, I saved myself for you and everything. And that, that'll probably, that'll make your marriage a lot better. But like, have, have, have you like lost your virginity or anything? Have you? You have? Or do you like have regrets? doing it now? Uh, I'd already had sex, so you don't have to be a virgin. <laughs> it's true love waits. It's true love waits. You make a commitment not to have sex till you're married, even if you already had. I do that. Well, then, that's you. I did. I made my commitment to God not to have sex till I'm married. And I, it doesn't matter if you've already messed up and you had sex, it's fine. Just from now on, not to. And we're having a ring ceremony tomorrow night at my church. <laughs> and I, you know, I did the drug scene, and I had all those friends, and like all my old friends are sitting in here, but I don't have to conform to them anymore. Hey, look at my boy. I've lost my virginity, and like I have regrets now because like a lot of people are like doing true love weights, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign it so I can say to my wife, I've saved myself for a certain amount of time. So. There's only one way that a guy can pick up a girl. Watch this. I walk up in the office. Here's another desk. Prop myself up. Make myself at home. Look at her and says, hello there. Hi. And she says, hi. That's all right. So when she comes back, I says, how you doing? Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you something. Here's the question. I was like, there's these guys out here that they don't think I have what it takes to pick up a girl. And I says, I've got the best pickup line that anybody else could ever have in the world. You wanna know what it is? Sure. Okay. Listen to this, guys. Who's your uh, favorite music singer? I don't really have one. Don't have one, huh? Uh, you like movie actors? How's Tom Cruise sound? Okay. Suppose Tom Cruise strutted his stuff down in here and he looked you square in the eyes and he says, Susan, would you like to go to a very romantic dinner tonight? Would you say yes to him? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can assure you Tom Cruise is not going to show up. So can I take that romantic dinner date, baby? 
Five months, six days, we've been married. So it works. Sure does. Sure does. Lord, I just pray that you would just give us strength to resist the devil when um, he's going to throw temptation our way, God, and Lord, he's going to throw physical stuff our way, and he's going to throw everything else, God, but control our hormones, Lord, and just keep us in check all night, and whatever we might do wrong, God, but uh, we both just love you, God, and uh, you're an awesome God and worthy to be praised. It's in the name of Christ I pray, amen. Me, Brandon, and Eddie. Yeah, Eddie will be the pastor. pastor. I'll be the youth pastor. Brandon, Brandon will be... be the counselor. I mean, the chances of me staying here are pretty good because there's like 800 churches in Nashville. I don't know how many of them are Baptists, but still, there's like 800. Yeah. How do you know God's going to call you to be a Baptist youth pastor? Because I'm Baptist. Once Baptist, always Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> me and Pamela, we were talking about how she was going to marry Brandon and I was going to marry you, and we were going to live next door. and carpool in the morning, take our kids to school, and then we're going to come home and stay in our robes and slippers with curlers in our hair and drink coffee <laughs> and talk all morning long and then go home and clean our houses and bake cookies and cakes. It was neat. Hello. I first fell in, in love with you on that night, too. It was just that phone call. You know, six months was like a long time. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's OK. It was worth it. Yeah. You got your priorities straight. Yeah. I love you. I love you. It's kind of weird, though, that like, God would take me through all that God would take me through all that and take you through all that and bring us back and hopefully in the future the two shall become one. <laughs> Genesis 2.21, I think. What did we do on our first date? Well, I wanted to take her somewhere nice, but I wanted to take her somewhere that was kind of a little... Uh, entertainment wise you know you don't want to go to a boring place so I wanted to tell her something about my personality so I said well Susan how about going to um, seeing Jesus Christ superstar uh, what do you think about that I wanted to get to know her not in an intimate type of way yet but another type of way getting to know who the real Susan was what did I do I took her no, I didn't take her to church. If you want to find out how a girl reacts, girl. let them see them sweat. See them sweat. See them sweat. Take them to the gym. Why does a guy want to take a girl to a sporting event? Because most girls don't like sports at all. And they don't like to be sweat. And if they break their nails, and they, if they break their nails, it's kind of, yeah, most girls aren't like that. Most girls aren't like that. When you see the other party sweat, that actually tells them what they're made of. <laughs> On a date, you don't go below the neck if you want to be safe and if you don't want to go too far. All right. I haven't been in that situation too much since we made the pack. But <laughs> don't joke. <laughs> but uh, How long ago was that pack? Josh, like it was about two or three years ago. <laughs> That's when Josh wanted to be a preacher. Uh, but um, <laughs> I think that everybody gets tempted, but everybody knows their stopping points too. You know when. How do you know what your stopping point is? You just know. You just know. You, you know how far. Yourself. When you start yeah. feeling uncomfortable. You know, I mean, I know my stopping stop point. You know, I hope y'all know y'all's. Of course. Uh, I don't. I don't know about you. 
Thank you. So you like get tempted and then get in the car. Yeah, I get tempted to get in the car and drive. Oh, I thought we were talking about getting tempted. That's how you I'm talking about everything. I mean, you gotta have a way to let off steam. That's the way I always let off steam. So you take cold showers and you drive. Uh, yeah. No, the only time I take cold showers is when I'm tempted. I don't let my team out like that. Anyway, show me. Oh, that sounds messed up. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm it's, it's out. okay. It's well, okay. I'm out. I do the same. I get in the car. I don't know. I mean, you just. <laughs> that's that's, that's why I went to church. It's okay. That's that's, that's why I started going to church. When I found out, you know, my dad was like, not too long ago, my dad started messing around with my mom. So I went and I uh, took every bet I had out of the bank, and hired a private detective, and uh, he kind of gave me some clues, some facts actually about my dad. No. Um, I mean, the whole time, the only strength I had was going to church. And I mean, I had my friends, but I couldn't talk about it to just anybody. And that's, I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world to say. You know, my, my dad's cheating on my mom, and I, I had to pay to find out. You know, but, I mean, I, I fell back on the church. People there helped me out. I found out that I have more faith in the church than I do with my own family. <laughs> Is the, this October will be four years that I was HIV positive. And uh, I want you to know that it could happen to you if you so decide to do something which is sex. Now, the sex was meant to be in the marriage bed between a man and wife. You know, it, it's not bad to say I'm a virgin. It's not bad to say, no, I'm not going to have sex. Because, face it, this is 1995. There is lots and 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 lots of diseases out there besides AIDS that you can get from sex. I was involved with a guy that I really didn't need to be involved with. I ended up sleeping with him. And I want to focus on how God changed me and how he made me brand new. And God will not reveal his plan for your life to you until you like totally give everything over to him and you make yourself nothing before him. And um, after I got saved, uh, I decided not to date for six months. I made a commitment to God because I realized that I needed to get my security. And um, during this commitment, God revealed to me that he was all that I would ever need, that he would be my best friend and uh, my boyfriend <laughs> and my daddy if I needed him to. Amen. Now, let's say that Jennifer, let's say that she doesn't date anybody and all of a sudden God's got his hand on her and God's using her on her campus and all of a sudden, one day, she slips and she falls. And when she slips and falls, she starts living in sin, whatever sin you want to talk about. She's living in it. And so you know what happens? We go, no, no, Jennifer, you got to sit down right there. God can't ever use you. And God's going, no, no, Jennifer, stand up. I want to use you. And everybody's going, no, no, you got to sit down, Jennifer, because God cannot use you. And God's going, get up, Jennifer. <laughs> They're not the ones that call you. I call you. Please stand up. And I want you to know that when, when, when God does something in your life, when he does that, God will forgive you and forget your sins. And God wants to lay his hands on some of you tonight. Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for my salvation. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. I don't know if you guys believe that God answers prayers, but he does because he heard the prayers of two loving parents who prayed for me, their child, but also God's child, until I came back to God's way because I wanted to live my way. Drinking and relationships and friends and anything that the world had to offer me. But I know that God heard my parents' prayers and heard their hearts cry out, and he brought me back. 
And I stand here today after a year of a commitment to wait for true love. And my prayer is that this commitment would mean something to you like it's meant to me. If you're making the commitment to abstain from sex until marriage, I want you to stand up with your parent, would you? Because what I want you to do, parents, if you have a ring, I want you to take that ring and put it on whatever finger your child or the person that you're with wants to have that on whatever. Now, parents, here's what I want you to repeat. This ring will not keep you sexually pure. This ring will not keep you from sexual temptation. This ring will not keep you from sexual temptation. Let this ring be a constant reminder. Let this ring be a constant reminder. To you to remain sexually pure. To you to remain As the adult with you, I will only be involved in sex. Whereas it is based on the word of God. I make a commitment to you to be sexually pure from this day until marriage. I ask you to hold me accountable concerning the people I date. I desire to be a constant witness in the area of abstinence. I will pray that your honeymoon night will be an act of obedience. I believe God's plan is the only plan for happiness. You know, you don't have to be in a sexual relationship to have fulfillment in that relationship. And one of that being is just looking out in society. One of that is, uh, uh, take this family right here. Are you married, sir? Yeah. Are you? What's your name? Muhammad al -Khatif. Muhammad al -Khatif? And this is? That's my little your daughter? No, she's my wife. She's wife, yeah. What's her name? Asma Lulu. Asma Lulu. Husband, wife, and kid? Notice? Notice? Just a family meal together. Are we bothering you? No, no, no. Great. This is our, uh, some of our youth group from Radnor Baptist Church, and we're actually uh, doing a follow-up on True Love Waits on how society is geared to, you know, a lot of the uh, sexual intercourse before marriage. And we're trying to teach the kids that not only do we have to focus on, you know, the hugging and kissing? And, but you can have a fun time just drinking coffee like yourself. You know, just spending time talking to each other. That's what makes the relationship work. Sure does. To have a successful marriage, it doesn't have to be one that involves sex. May a female, together, they know each other in an intimate way. <laughs> Ain't that right? <laughs> Ain't that right? And once a couple experiences that before marriage, They've lost the mystique of what marriage is all about. What is the world of secular rock music like, and how does it impact the American teenager? I like Guns N' Roses and that kind of stuff. Um, Death Lover is my favorite. I'd like to talk about um, young people with you know, and demonic influences and music and how that plays a part in it. I think, you know, that my feelings are very strong for me. But right now, that all needs to be put on hold. And, um... Sunday night, before I came in, when I t told you that I loved you, it was sincere and in my heart. And when I promised you that I really wanted you to wait for me, that was sincere and from my heart. But it just needs to wait at all. And it being Valentine's Day and everybody getting roses, I just thought of something. You know how, like, when you get a rose and you put it in water and it grows and it blooms? Yeah. But you can. If you want to wait, it can, you can put it in the freezer and it won't bloom yet. That's what we need to do. We just need to put the rose in the freezer and just let it stay like it is now. I think that's where they need to be put on hold.
once we dis decided to tell each other how we felt, it changed. But I don't want to back off from you. It's just basically that the only thing that I can <laughs> see good coming out of that is um, just that we'll still be friends because we've established a friendship at least. I'm 20 years old, I'm a sophomore in college, and at times I just sit in my room and it's like I'm depressed because I see everybody walking around in couples and all that, and plus, you know, spring fever's hitting and all that. And I must be a loser. You know, sometimes we think, oh, man, if I could just get that woman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, all my deepest emotional needs to be met, and my mm -hmm. spiritual needs to be met. Man, if I could just get that woman. Are you reading my diary? How'd you know? <laughs> And God comes along and says, hey, now, wait a minute here. Yeah. You know, here's a, here's a great line for your diary, okay? Mm -hmm. It goes, dear diary, never expect a woman to meet the needs that only God can yeah, meet. Yeah, you're right. Because you could go out and get a woman. Come on, Mark. Oh. But the point is you choose not just to go out with any woman. You want the kind of woman that's going to help you walk with God. And mm -hmm. it's got to be God's woman, God's time, God's place, God's yeah. everything. Yeah. And waiting is a painful thing. Yes, it is. But when you're 30 or 40 and married or whatever, you know, and have kids. You look back and say, man, that was worth it. It was worth the wait. And it, and it wasn't that long after all. Yeah. You know, so, so man, I think that's a great comment. What do you think about, uh, this is a great verse, okay? Okay. Classic. Dear Diary, okay? Matthew six thirty three. Seek first the mm -hmm. kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else will fall in place. And there are all these other things will be added unto you. Some people just panic, go from woman to woman. Some guys do just, oh, please, mother me, meet my needs. I can't go on without a woman. Yes, you can. And it's God's time. It's God's time for all of that. I've talked to Lance about just how he made it through it with Jennifer. Yeah. Because me and Christina have talked, and we decided that, you know, we were just going to base everything on friendship. Right. And just try to work from that. OK. And it's just really hard, because lately, Satan's been, you know, just like at church Wednesday, it was just, I was being really selfish. I didn't say anything or do anything like that. It's just the way I was thinking. It was, uh, you're going to get yourself dirty. It was all right. <laughs> It's just, uh, Satan was just telling me, you know, everything's okay, you can, you can just go ahead and date now. And he was um, just yeah. blinding me to the fact of why she made the commitment. Commitment uh, about not to date yeah. for a year? Well, <clears throat> let me tell you, I know that it's hard not dating her. Yeah. If she was ugly, that'd be one thing, <laughs> but she's not ugly, all right? Cause let me tell you that it'd be real easy to be consumed because most students are just consumed with relationships, especially dating somebody. Because girls are always my weakness. Yeah, well, let me tell you, I mean, she looks better than what you probably think God looks, looks okay? <laughs> and so instead of just coming to him, instead of going to him, you'd go to Christina. And God said, no, no, Joel, come to me, because I'll give you a lot better wisdom than Christina will. I'm sure that, I mean, when you're around her, as pretty as she is, you want to go, man, if I just could hug her or kiss her or whatever, I'd be a lot better. But you know where, if you start to kiss passionately, where that leads? Yeah. I mean, you were involved pretty physically with some girls, right? Yeah. Well, now... So you got a girl that loves God, and she's gonna say, "No, I want to wait." Uh, so just, man, just be friends. Just build, just build a great yeah, friendship, friendship with her. It's like everybody's trying. I mean, like Vicky knows about it and everything, and everybody's keeping us accountable. And everybody picks some one little thing that they don't like that we do, and so it's like we can't hardly even talk anymore without somebody coming up and saying, "Oh, are you sure that's not a relationship thing?" Jennifer, you know, is, is doing okay. Her, you know, she's she's fine. She's doing good. Lance and her in love. No nope. problem. <laughs> yes. And um, Christina, do you, you know about Christina and Joel? Well, yeah, I talked with Joel. He's struggling because of her, her commitment. commitment not to date. How's she doing with that? Um, she's doing okay. I have to kind of keep her balanced a little bit because sometimes, you know, they get into too much boyfriend girlfriend stuff and try to get her to back off a little bit. Um, it seems like just yesterday that me and Joel had that talk on January 10th. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not counting. <laughs> about, you know, how we felt about each other and, you know, that he was going to wait and stuff. And now it's like, yesterday I was thinking it's like only have four and a half months left. 
I mean, not, I mean, because I know y'all don't like hug or nothing, so I mean, it's mm -hmm. not really that y'all have that <laughs> Stay away from temptation, that but I mean, maybe y'all need to sit down and talk about, like, not spending so much time or talking so much or whatever, because, I, I mean, I know that y'all don't tell a lot of people because it, like, makes it harder, but, I mean, maybe y'all just need to quit talking just y'all for a while, you know, because, I mean, that might be what's making it hard. I mean, maybe... Y'all just kind of need to take a break from each other and, like, you focus on... Like, don't talk at all? Well, not at all. I mean, as long as you guys stay within your bounds, you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> and I think you'll date him in July. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to Mom for you. She'll do it. Like, this, the six months, it didn't seem like that long, and it seems almost weird that we're going out so soon, but mm -hmm. yet, I mean, I don't know, it's just, it's wonderful. I mean, just, <laughs> I guess it's kind of more of a sense of accomplishment, because it's like, you know that you were obedient, and you know that you waited, and you know that you're in God's will, and so it's like, it's okay for you to be joyful, and it's okay for you to, um... Like, be excited about it because, I mean, you're doing it all the right way. Because Lance and I used to do that. I mean, it got hard. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and act like it didn't. I mean, because, like, when we didn't touch, it's like I wanted to hug so bad. Like, like it's church that I wanted to hug. And I remember that night. Carolyn hugged Dad in her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squeeze him real tight. We had to, like, make a commitment. Like, not to have any physical contact whatsoever. Because that's human nature, but... Obedience is the key. Are you controlling the sex, or is the sex controlling you? I promise you there is not a bigger problem with students anywhere, any, in any other place in the world, there's not a bigger problem than the sex problem. The body is not meant for sexual immorality. Come here, Suzanne, over here. Center here. Now, Mike knows Christ. Suzanne is a believer too, okay? We're going to say, Mike, reach around and grab Suzanne's hand. Other way. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now, reach around the other way and grab his hand. Okay, now, what we're going to say is that Mike and Suzanne, while they were dating, they got involved in sex together. They're both believers and they both got involved in sex, all right? Now, let me tell you what's taking place. Right, Joe, hold this. Let me tell you what's taking place here. What's happened is, is that even though they've had sex, guess who had to have sex with them? <laughs> no, not Joel. <laughs> the person that had to have sex with them, you remember Joel played the person of Christ. And what had to happen? Christ has to have sex with you. And that's the reason that scripture says that once you're in the body of Christ, that you don't have sex until marriage because when you're having to have sex with another partner and you're in Christ, Mike and Suzanne both are in Christ, Christ has to have, have it with you. Okay. You can sit down. Thank you. My stepmom um, started when she first married my dad. I mean, I had these thoughts, these sexual thoughts about her. She wore, like, clothes a teenager would wear and stuff. And my stepsister, I mean, I don't have feelings at all for my other sisters or, or my mom or anything. But it's like the ones, it's like the one I'm not related to. I mean, not blood related to, that's just kind of this got, got me feeling. And I kind of feel like home should be more of a refuge and be able to kind of and be able to relax and stay away from that stuff, yet I'm bombarded with it even there in my thought. Jess said you started hanging around the wrong people. Remember at camp, you came off an incredible spiritual experience and God's done a great thing, but then when it got to a point that you came back and the more you hung around those friends that weren't good for you spiritually, I mean, you know, and the first thing, remember what happened was you said, well, I can win them over. And that's the reason that when Psalm says, you don't walk with them, you don't sit with them, you don't stand with them, okay? And you've got to get to the point of saying, God, what do you want to say to me? 
and you've got to decide to make sure that you walk with the Lord. You've got to pray that God will break your spirit. Come this weekend. My big concern for Jesse is that the Lord will just keep her safe. You know, back when Jesse tried to kill herself in November, it kind of appeared for about a week there that that shook her up, almost dying, shook her up enough to turn back to the Lord. I don't know, she just came up to me real briefly and we hugged and it was kind of awkward because, I don't know, it kind of feels like, you know, she didn't really want to do that, but she didn't say a lot to me, so I don't know. I mean, she doesn't talk to me and I'm sort of like lost as to, you know, except that I know that she's like with people that, you know, she, she doesn't need to be with, you know. Yeah, but I think there comes a time that you're going to have to say, right, yeah, I'm going to release you to the Lord and let you go, and, and we're just going to see what God does because, I mean, I'm not sure that it's done a whole lot of good for her to stay here. Right. I did wrong by going to my dad. Yeah. I mean, I'm 16 years old, and I don't feel like there's really anybody at this church or at my house that I can even go to and talk to. I mean, what is a 16-year-old kid supposed to do? I mean, I have the rest of my life in front of me, and I see no future whatsoever. And I see it coming to an end very quickly, because it's like, I mean, if, if you don't have love, you're not going to make it in life, OK? And that's the only reason I do True Love Waits because it's like, I mean, love, it means a whole lot to me, you know? There's not really anything else I can do because I don't think it's a parent-child thing. I think it's between her and God. She's on a downward spiral, and I just don't always think that you can stop those. If she starts living in sin and I just... starts having sex with somebody, it's like... I've never had sex, but I know it can probably be addicting, and it's like if she doesn't want to give that up, then she's not going to want to come back home then. I don't know if it does any good when we pressure her, because we were her accountability people, and she didn't take it as that. She took it as us picking on her and make it, being sarcastic towards her just because you two had turned your lives over completely, and she wasn't ready, and it's just really hard being in a a home like that when you're the only one that's not like that. I mean, all of us here are trying to live right and serve the Lord, and Jesse doesn't want to. I mean, it's just the forces of good and evil, and they just don't mix. People hate us. We're getting killed. Okay, you get, I mean, what happened? I mean, what, what happened? People hate us. Well, it came to a point killed. on our campus where people who were involved in sex and alcohol and, and a lot of other things were just getting away with it. We have a rule called the 24-hour rule, and what it says is that you're not allowed to use drug, alcohol, tobacco at any time in the 24-hour day while you're a member of Donaldson Christian Academy. And um, they were breaking that rule, and they knew it, and everybody at the school knew it. We had brought it up in assembly before that year. And by having that rule, that means that people who are going to stand for the Lord, if you sit there and you deny that you've got that rule all year long, you, and somebody dies in a car wreck, we pretty much felt like we'd be big time responsible because we had that rule and we could have enforced it. And to us, it was worth the price to let their parents find out. One of the first things the principal asked me was to get a list of the cars from Lance. And I went and got the list, and I, and I got Lance, Lance to make the list, and I gave it to the principal. Was it, was it you told him Lance or Nettie? I wrote the list. And I handed him the list. I felt like my parents had paid $21,000 to the school, and I felt like we expected to get out the spirituality that we were going to get out of it, and we expected to get it in the next three months. And that's what we expected our school to give us. Any of our students involved in the party? I don't want names. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. <laughs> there was. Yeah. Some of you in here tonight, if you drop dead right now, you'd split hell wide open. I know that. You need to step up and be what God wants you to be. Some of you young men in here, you need to have some guts and finally say, okay, I'll admit I want to live in sin. Now, now just take me. Please. Stephanie, you're not a Christian, are you? Um, um, yes, yeah, sort of. I doubt it. I'm between a Christian and a Baptist. No, nah, don't give me that. No, I go to church. So what? I go to Calvary Baptist. So what? Going to church doesn't make you a Christian anymore, and going to Pizza Hut makes you a pizza. So what? What's that supposed to mean? You're not a Christian. Yes, I am. If you were a Christian, your heart would not be this hard towards people that love you and towards counsel like this. Your heart is so hard. I have a hard time believing you're a Christian. Well, 
I say it's a church game and you don't know Jesus, and that's a far more serious problem than just what she's talking about. Although you are going to lose your virginity and you are probably going to get date raped and you probably are going to get trashed, God hates the crowd that you're running with. God hates what you're doing. God hates it that your heart is so hard towards him. Why don't you turn around for God? And it's, a, it's an eternal game you're playing here. Well, I mean, just because I might smoke and I might drink don't make me a bad person. Well, and the people I hang around. does God want you to smoke and drink? No, you're disobeying God. Steph, I believe you die tonight, you go straight to hell. And why do you think that? Because you are indifferent to Jesus Christ. In the end, you don't give a flip about what he says you ought to do or not do. Do you really want Christ in your life? Yes. Why? So I can change and so I won't go to hell. And I want to hang around the right people, but at my school there ain't no right people. <sighs> well, Steph, I've been tough on you, but God told me to get tough on you, so here we are. You sure you want Jesus in your life now? Yes. This isn't a game now. This is life and death. I know. You hang on. I got to go to the break, and I'll talk with you right afterward, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I know I'm being straight up with you, but, you know, this is not a game anymore. But we're dealing with the issues of life. I mean, this is life and death. So you hang on, okay? Okay. Be back right after this. Her heart is hard. is the hour to share your power. Be a prayer partner. You can write us at Dawson McAllister Live, Post Office Box 3512, Irving, Texas, 75. The next thing I do, I want it to be something permanent, and it don't matter how long I have to wait, because I don't, I need that, and I need to wait for whoever. And right now, I think that's you. I don't, I don't feel the same. I think, I don't, I don't think at, anyway, at my age, at our age, as young as we are, I don't think we should be counting on anything permanent now anyway. Yeah, I understand that. And I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I can't think permanent now. I know you can't even think about tomorrow. <laughs> I think you're the one that I'm gonna marry, even though you don't think it. And I mean, I'm really sure about that right now, and I just, don't get why you don't know any of this stuff, you know what I mean? You know, through, I mean, by God, you know what I mean? I want to go out with uh, who God wants me to be with. God? He could have told me this and not want to tell you until, like, right before it happens. I don't know why. I just, yeah. that frustrates me. I just, I don't get it. It frustrates me to know that that's how you feel. And that's not how I feel, and it makes me upset that that's, that makes you feel bad. Because of how much I love you? I don't know. It just makes me nervous. Well, you know, I think that you're the one for me. I need to stop playing with that pen. And you know, I'm going to wait until I know otherwise that you're not, and it don't matter how long. So blue She's like in love with Jay. Okay, is Jake doing well? Yes. Good. And um, Blue and I have talked a lot about how parallel our lives are. You know, that the Lord knew like I needed her just like she needed us because, you know, Blue's never had a family. And so she is so grateful and so appreciative. And she wants me to adopt her when she's 18, and I'll probably do that. And she's decided that she's going to live with me forever and just get married <laughs> and live at my house and have babies. And we're just going to get a big house and expand. Her husband would yes. be thrilled, I'm uh -huh. sure. Yeah. Lord.
along with, with listening to some, to, to some things that are not just complete like Christian lyrics like, like Disney. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I want to tell you something, okay? Music, for some of you, is a devastating thing in your life. And if you think you can listen to that garbage and not affect you, you're the first person in the history of America that it's ever happened to. What you think is what you'll become. Blue, come share your testimony with us, sweetie. Music in general is a big part of my life. I like music. I like all kinds of music. It's always been part of my life, you know, listening to it, playing it, writing, whatever. I listen to all kinds, you know. I have a very large collection of secular music. <laughs> Sunday morning in discipleship, I just realized that before God can reveal what he wants me to be, I have to just give him myself wholly, and I wasn't by keeping my secular music. You have to give yourself completely. All right, so if you want to smash tapes, if you want to give some tapes away, if you just want to throw them away, We've got hammers for you and the whole deal. Yeah. Why you bring your tapes up? If you've got tapes and you want to smash them, bring them up. <laughs> I was so proud of so many of you who committed to destroy all of your secular music. How many of you did that? Let me just see your hands and hear you. How many of you just committed to do that? The youth leaders, the youth pastors, please stand. The youth pastor Phil Wilson, would you please come there? You've got to lose some of your friends that are causing you to be lukewarm. You've got to find accountability friends. You've got to passionately come after Christ with all your heart, seeking Him every day. It's time for war. No more Mr. Nice Guy to the devil. It's time for war. No more pretty good Christianity and just getting by. It's time to fight and win the war for the souls of men. Could it be that you guys are the ones that the history books will be written about in heaven? They say, man, it was those young people of the 90s. They did it, man. The gospel to the ends of the earth. They did it. It's time for war. It's time to get serious about taking the gospel to the world, doing something about it. Just us. We can change this world. We can change it. We can do it. Right here, we can do it. Amen. We're going to take an offering in just closing moments to show the world that we're not just a bunch of selfish teenagers. We can give up a pizza and give up a Coke, give up a six pack of Coke for the sake of the cause of Christ, for people so they can hear the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you just pray with me? I want you to sincerely say these words to your Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I give you my all. In Jesus' name, I turn away from the world. I turn to you. In Jesus' name, forgive me, Lord. Give me a new heart.
moment, not an emotional moment, committing your life to Jesus Christ for the rest of your life.